This, uh, is not very good. All right, let's kick back to Primaris Invader ATV. I think the main thing here is to kill off the Mourinho cart vibes by lengthening the chassis, which will move the wheels away from the corners. So I got out my razor saw and made some early sacrifices to the bit gods. The ground clearance, or a lack of, also screams go-kart. So I did away with the original suspension units, which, uh, well, I didn't like anyway. As for the rear suspension, I actually really like that they've carried over the Space Marine bike aesthetic, and I figured I could use what was already there by rotating it around in the chassis to create more ground clearance. In practice, that meant slowly cutting away the whole assembly with a knife, being careful to leave as much material as possible for later when I needed to reattach the unit. With the chassis now liberated from all those unnecessary bits, I should probably show you the plan. Simply put, it's ATV meets DPV. And hopefully that creates something that feels a bit more plausible. Starting out at the front of the vehicle, the first job was to blank off what I guess you'd call are the side pods of the ATV using some one mm styrene sheet. Styrene sheet features prominently in this build, so here's my guide to building model cars for little toy soldiers out of fancy plastic. Before you get to cutting, sanding, gluing and endless, endless filling, some sort of technical drawing is invaluable if there's any sort of complexity to the shapes that you're going to be building. It doesn't have to be fancy, but if you can draw it to scale, then you can print templates, which makes the next stages much easier. And if you are feeling fancy, well, you can always do it in 3D. Cutting styrene sheet is best done with a sharp hobby knife and a steel straight edge. But this does leave a raised burr on both sides of the cut that needs to be sanded smooth. Assembling small parts with large hands can be tricky, so uh, enlist the help of a small child or maybe something like these one, two, three blocks. Since they're literally covered in right angles, they're absolutely invaluable. They pair up really nicely with something like an engineer's square and you can use magnets to hold smaller parts. In my opinion, thin solvent-based glues that can be applied with a brush are by far the best type for this kind of work. They permeate the entire joint via capillary action, and they give you a little bit of time to reposition parts after you've applied the glue. My favourites are Tamiya Extra Thin Cement and Methyl Ethyl Ketone, which is better known as either Butanone or Mech. Just like my resume, the gaps need filling to make this look credible. There are lots of products you can use to do this, but my favourite by far is Milliput. You need a gap filler that dries hard enough that you can sand it, but not so hard that it crumbles out of the joints, and I've yet to find a product that does this better. And the reason for that is that it behaves like both a putty and a clay. You apply it to begin with much in the same way you would something like green stuff, and then if you wait around 20 minutes, half an hour, and then apply water while you're smoothing it out, it produces a clay-like slip which really helps you blend it into the gaps. And that's the same basic process that's repeated throughout the build. To complete the nose section, I added another wedge-shaped box on top to allow space either side for the bolters, and then beefed up the whole thing with a variety of armour plates whose uh, influence, um, no, no, they were stolen, I stole from various Space Marine vehicles. After a bit more uh, <clears throat> friendly rubbing, the nose assembly was ready to attach to the hull. I made a point of test fitting the driver at this point to make sure I hadn't done anything, you know. I also had the realisation at this point that I didn't need to do anything with his hands because they'd be inside the cockpit and not visible, which is fantastic. I wanted the rear deck of the ATV to be slightly longer and placed slightly higher than the original to create more clearance between the roll cage and the gun. I couldn't reuse the original part for this, so I built a new deck from four pieces of styrene, which I then attached to the main hull. This was topped with a piece of tread plate pattern styrene, which slid into place just beautifully. Uh, let's cover those holes. Much better. I call this the duality of model making. For the roll cage to look any good, I needed symmetry across both sides, which is why some sort of bending jig for the styrene rods is very helpful. I'd normally use a tea light candle to bend styrene rod because the temperature's a little bit more stable, but I suspect mine have been requisitioned for domestic use, hence the uh, forbidden technology. Assembly is very much as you'd expect. 
Drill some holes, jam in some rod. Drill some more holes, jam in more rod. Swear a bit, add some glue, you know the drill. In fact, the only thing that even vaguely borders on being a challenge with this is filing a concave profile on either end of the crossbar. Oh, and uh, wiggling it into place with sausage fingers. In order to mount the rear suspension assemblies, I added some 10mm styrene tube into the void that was left when I cut it away earlier. The chassis was placed on a pile of offcuts, which would both provide the correct ride height and allow me to glue on both of the rear suspension arms and hopefully keep them square. The front end's a little more complicated, mainly because what's provided with the kit's a bit naff. I reused the hub assembly and tyre and then crafted some vaguely wishbone-like suspension pieces from styrene sheet. After some thoroughly tedious attention with the sanding stick and a little bit of sub-assembly, the suspension arms were mounted to the hub. And once that was all thoroughly dry, I used my pin vise to drill some holes for the axle. With a piece this small, it's really important to start with a small bit and work your way up to the final size, which was 2.5mm in this case. I cut the axle from brass rod for peace of mind, but the same styrene used for the roll cage would have almost certainly been strong enough. I was able to reuse the Primaris Marina unmodified and either of the main armaments by mounting the whole assembly on top of a small piece of 10mm styrene tube. And the bolters were straightforward too. All I needed to do was trim down the magazine slightly to make it look like the ammunition was fed from within the hull of the vehicle. At this point, I got lazy and laser cut the hubcaps, but it would be easy enough to make them out of styrene should you choose. And with that, I was about ready to call the build finished. Of course, I was kidding myself. It, it wasn't finished. I'd forgotten to do any of the rivets, which I promptly cut from one millimeter styrene rod. Apparently not on camera. It's, uh, it's amazing what you learn when you start editing the footage. I'd like to say, you know, lesson learned, but I've made that mistake so many times over the years. Anyway, here's the paint. To start things off, I gave everything a quick prime with Vallejo German Red Brown. God, that cut was slick. I bet you didn't even see it. <laughs> anyway, I followed that up with a white zenithal highlight to create some tonal variation, before breaking out the Imperial Fist yellow contrast paint and building up the colour density using several thin coats. Speaking of thinning, after some experimentation, I found that a ratio of around 60-40 paint to thinner seemed to work really well through my airbrush, with a few drops of flow improver thrown in to delay the drying time. Next up, I threw on a coat of gloss varnish to protect the very thin paint and to prepare the model for some panel line washes. I'm a big fan of oil paints for this kind of work because, well, you've got a few hours to go back and clean up any inevitable mistakes you make along the way. All right, let's just blitz through the base coating. Chaos Black on the black bits, Mephiston Red on the red bits, Vallejo Metal Air Gun Metal on the, well, you get the idea. Oh, and some uh, dark gray on the wheel hubs. Time for some uh, ill-advised chipping. Now, sponge chipping is a fantastic technique if you can exercise a modicum of self-restraint and, uh, well, clearly I can't. Sponging on dark grey paint only gets you so far, so I finesse the paint chips with a brush before adding a slightly lighter grey tone in the highlights of the chips and some faded yellow as well. Then, forgetting that I still had transfers to apply, I threw on a coat of general grime from the underside of the model. I mix this from Vallejo German Red Brown and German Grey as, well, I already had them out on the workbench. And speaking of transfers, which I, uh, I think it was a moment ago, I enlisted the help of Brother Microset to help stick the transfers to the surface, followed by several coats of Microsol to dissolve the transfer film. I find this combination gets you about 95% there, but a quick coat of gloss followed by matte varnish completely removes any sign of the transfer film. The final step was to add a little bit of chipping and some weathering to the transfers because, well, I forgot to apply them earlier. And with that, I was happy to call the ATV finished. Hmm, not too bad. I think I managed to improve on the overall proportions of the model and make it feel just a little bit more plausible, while keeping some of the key Space Marine aesthetic. Now, granted, I don't think Quentin Tarantino is particularly going to enjoy this one, and that is something I'm going to need to address. And I probably should have gone a bit lighter on the weathering, but what are you going to do? Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you're looking for something else to watch, then I scratch built this uh, ridiculous orc mega gargant. And uh, if not, then thank you for watching to the end. And let me know in the comments if there's anything else you think I should uh, fix. Pro probably not these guys, though. <laughs>